Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. It's me, Mrs. Reed Wright, and we are talking this week about the elements of art. Yesterday, we learned about line, and a line can be curvy or straight or broken or zigzag, and today, we're going to be talking about shape, which we talked about if a line crosses itself, it makes a shape. Let's sing our hello song and get started. Ready? Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello. Get ready, get set, go. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Now, yesterday I told you about a mom who did a drawing of her two daughters and she used all of the elements of art in the artwork. She also used some of the things like pattern and unity. So we're going to talk today about shape. And I wanted to tell you about this book called Shape Shift, but let me pick up my table so that I can make it steady and you'll be able to see the pictures large. This ga gal, Joyce Hesselberth, did this picture about shape shift. Now she gives some examples of shapes and how what they are like when you put them together. So let me open up this book, get this paper off my lap. Shape shift. Shape shift, here's the girl, and even she is made out of a shape. She has a triangular body, and a circular head, and then she has curved lines for her legs. Now we can see on the title page that a dog brings in a shape, and it's the shape of the triangle, which is her dress shape. And here are some of the shapes, and we don't need to learn all the shapes because once you start drawing them and you can tell people, oh, I used a semicircle for the ballerina's skirt, or I used the crescent for the picture of the moon, because we don't call it a moon shape anymore because we're talking about it as a math shape, so we call it crescent. And I'm going to just be paraphrasing or telling the story rather than reading a lot of it, but it's telling us to look around our world and see what kind of shapes we see. And then they offer us shapes. For instance, the girl tells that I have a triangle, and the boy says I have a semicircle. Tap, 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 tap. Let's put our shapes together and see what we can make. And with a triangle and a semicircle, they made a ballerina. And they say, I see a ballerina twirling, spinning, gliding, floating across a stage. And you can see here is where they use the semicircle, and here is where they use the triangle. Let's look at the next page. The boy says, I see an elephant flying high with a thousand balloons up, up and away. Oh, it's kind of like that movie we saw up where the enough balloons seem to be able to lift a house. Oh, look on this page. We don't say moon. What is the shape we say? Crescent, that's right, and this is a trapezoid. Now it's been stretched up big and tall. We, we have pattern blocks at school, but our trapezoid is kind of smallish. This one's stretched up, but look what it is. She's trying to put the crescent on top of the trapezoid, and she says, what is it? And he says, oh, because he's pushing the trapezoid backwards. What are they making? <gasps> it's an angry bull ready to charge. Here is the trapezoid. Here is the crescent. I see a slippery fish jumping in the water. Here again, same shapes, different, different picture. Here is the trapezoid. Here is the crescent. And do you see how they have it diving down into the water? Let's look at the next page. They say, now try this one. I have a rectangle. I have a circle. Oh, he's using a fishing pole as a crane to pull it up 
and putting it on top of the circle. What do you see? Let's find out what they've made. I see a lady with a fancy hat. And here she is with her circle and the rectangle as a hat with a line that is straight and curved on the ends. Well, I think we've looked at enough shapes in the book to now we know how to put shapes together to make pictures. Let's close up the book and take a look at the project we're going to do today. Yesterday I asked you to maybe bring some white paper or some paper, it doesn't even have to be white. As a matter of fact, I brought black paper as my magic carpet background. And here it is. I'm going to start out by putting the two edges together and make some hole punches for my yarn later because I want to make sure that part gets included. Now when I do my hole punches, I want them to be the same distance from the edge. So I'm going to put the edge of the hole punch right up close to the uh, edge of the paper so that each time I punch a hole, it's about the same distance from the edge as each other. So there I have it so I can loop my yarn in. And oh, I can use these polka dots for later on one of my patterns. Now boys and girls, with your extra paper, if you've been keeping your scraps, you can do all kinds of art and not have to start out using a brand new piece of paper. Oh, this is going to be good. Now, I am going to make my first stripe across for my magic carpet. And I think this one is just going to be a straight line. Now, I know it's a little bit too long because I held it up and I saw that it hangs off of my magic carpet a little bit. But that's OK. I'm going to put the glue on it, the glue stick, and put it across. I will place it on my magic carpet near the edge, make sure it's lined up. And you'll see I was right. It hangs off the edge of my magic carpet. I just turn the magic carpet over, see where the line is hanging off, and go along that edge and snip it off. It makes it even and it makes it tidy. I might save this because I might need this little rectangle for something later. You know I told you I like blue and orange together. So I'm going to show you one stripe what I'm doing and then you'll see what we're going to do through all the way down my magic carpet until we finally add the yarn fringe. Now I start out by using just a little piece of paper because I think it's hard to cut when you have a great big piece. So I'm folding it in half once and twice. I can cut out any shape I would like. And I think on this one, I'm going to cut like a leaf shape, which is an oval shape with pointed ends. So I'm cutting that. And it also kind of ends up looking like an eyeball. I've talked to you about glue stick and how much easier it is to rub your paper across the glue stick rather than rub the glue stick on the paper. So I put my one, because remember, we're going to make shape patterns across. I'll put another one. I'm going to put one at one end, one at the other end, and then space the other two in between so that it's kind of balanced. I end up putting my end ones on and then try and find the middle for the other two. For me, that is easier. And I have my last one, and I'll put it here. That looks pretty good. That's not all I want in that row, though. I think I'll put some orange or yellow orange or peach colored on it, or maybe even some magenta. I might have to get my package of paper because I don't see any yellow in here. Oh, you know what might be good is the lime green paper I used for the bowl yesterday. So I'm going to cut a piece of it. And I think I'll make a few triangles on it, fold it in half. And I think if I'm going to put them in these spaces, let me count how many I need. One, two, three. OK, so I'll fold it in half again. And to make a triangle, all I do is go at the bottom, cup to the top, and from there, cut in a diagonal. 
and I'm going to use my same strategy of putting the glue steady and put my paper across it. Glue is steady, rub my paper across it. Kind of gets on my fingers, but that's okay. And the magic carpet I'm going to put on my classroom door and let people know when they come in, they can take a magic carpet right inside. See all the wonderful things we're going to learn. There we go. There's my first strip that shows a pattern of shapes. Now I think I'll choose a new color. I think I might use that magenta because it looks so bright. And will it be long enough? No, but I can sure make two of them. So I'm going to fold it in half because uh, this time I'm not going to do a straight line for the beginning of my pattern. I'm going to cut a curve line that goes up and down like the ocean waves. And since I have to connect it because my paper wasn't long enough, because I used it for something else, I'm just going to do this one like this, leaving a fat enough space, or thick enough, I should say. Thick is really an art word. Fat is kind of, I don't know, what is that used for? Not Usually not in a friendly way, so we want to make sure we use something like the word thick. Now this one is so wiggly, I wanted to make sure I didn't rip it. So I'm going to put it on the edge, move it down a little bit from my straight line one, put it on there. Now will this one fit over here? Will it connect well? Yes. And I think I'll just cut it off a little bit. I tore it because I can trim it afterwards. I showed you how, how I turn it over. So I'll just put this on the edge, put it like that. And you could even just be telling me from wherever you're watching, you say, turn your paper over, Miss Reed Wright, so you can see where you need to cut it. Oh, there it is. Sure enough, you are right. Look at it that way. Now, what shapes will I put down the middle of this one? And what color? Just don't know which one looks the best. I think I like magenta and orange together. So I'm going to cut off a piece of it. And what shapes do I think I want to use? Maybe. I'll do some hole punches. Now you can get one of these hole punches at that store where everything's a dollar. This one was a dollar. I don't know if it's my hand. Oh, I'm feeling not very strong because I hurt my finger and it is hard for me to squeeze this. I have to use both hands to make it work. All right, put the hole punch up here. Now on little tiny things like this, I will put dots because if I don't, all those dots will stick to my finger and then I will end up being polka dotted instead of my artwork. So I made little places and sometimes I lick my finger and then pick it up and put it on there and it stays on there. Oh look, there were three together. So I just touch it and touch it to the glue. Touch it and touch it to the glue. Touch it. Oh, one tried to take a ride with it. Get off of there. Touch it and touch it. Do you see how much easier it is to put a little glue dot and then just put the shape on top of there? The thing about that though, boys and girls, remember as this is drying, don't stack something on top of it because there's extra glue all along here and I don't want it to be damaged. Now I have a little bit of black I'd like to add to this, but I can't put black as one of the stripes because look how it gets lost in there. But it can be a skinny little broken line we talked about when we talked about line. So I'm just going to cut a very skinny little strip. A skinny strip or a thin strip because skinny, no one likes to be called fat or skinny. So name calling we know is just not friendly and we just don't do it. I only call people by their real names or you know when I come to your classroom I visit and I call the boys mister and the girls sister. And people always say to me, wait, is that your sister? I say, no, I call the girls sister and the boys mister. Because there's so many names I have to remember. And so I have to think, well, what can I call them? And I sometimes think boys and girls just sound so plain. So I like to say mister and sister. I used to say scholars 
because scholars are people who are studying and getting smarter every day. So I say, scholars, please sit like a student and let's learn this. I have to move this one down because it was too long for that little space. So I'm going to cut a shorter one for there. How's your magic carpet coming along, boys and girls? Are you doing patterns across? Are you doing dots and skinny lines or thin lines like I am right now? Or are you just making your own shapes? I wonder. Do you think that while you're working sometimes, someone will take a picture of you working and send me the picture? I'd love to see the artwork that you make and your little face in the picture too. And I can say, oh, look at the artwork they're sending to me. And I can put it on my Facebook page that I have that shows everyone's artwork. And maybe we can even show it on air here. Okay, how many lines have I made? One straight line, one curvy line. And my pattern, let's say it, let's do the color pattern. Blue, lime green, blue, lime green, blue, lime green, blue. Let's do the shape. We can say almond triangle, almond triangle, almond triangle, almond. What about on this line? It's a curvy line and it's orange dot, black dash, orange dot, black dash, orange dot, black dash, orange dot, black dash, and it continues. Now, what will I do on my next one? I think I'll do a blue. I hope it's long enough to go all the way across. Oh, lucky day, I did not make it. So I'm going to zig and zag, zig and zag, zig and zag, zig and zag. I'm diagonal, turning my hand, not the paper. When you're cutting, you should anchor your elbow into your side and change the direction of your scissors. That is what you learn in school. When they, someone's teaching you to use scissors and to cut, they say, move your hand, not the paper. Only when you need to turn your paper to go a different direction. Like right now, look, I'm moving my paper this time. But really, I'm just going to zig and zag that, and I'm going to go the same way. Oh, let me move this so you can see. When I have the paper underneath where I'm working, you really can't tell. I'm just going to cut out a little triangle underneath that so it continues to be in a zig and a zag. Watch what I'm doing. Do you see where it goes in, in, down? I go in, back out, in, diagonal, back out, in, diagonal, back out, in, diagonal, turn my scissors, back out, in, diagonal, back out, in, diagonal, back out. I think that's good enough. Alrighty, let's move all these scraps over here, measure and see how it looks. Perfect. I'm going to zig and zag my glue stick now, zig it and zag it on the edge. And remember what I told you, when you do not do it on the edge, it tends to pop up. And then every time it moves or you take it somewhere, something gets under that little piece and sometimes it rips it, which is kind of disappointing. And then you either have to glue it back on or tape where it's ripped. But that happens, you just fix it and move on. We don't get mad about art. We just say, oh, that's disappointing. Oh, that's too bad. All right, I think I'm going to start now. What color would be good with the blue? I really do like the look of the lime green, but what goes, what's the opposite on the color wheel from blue? Oh, it's orange. I've used a lot of orange, but I like it, so I'm going to do that. I think on this one, I'll cut a little piece. Remember I told you about folding it? Folding it will give it a nice big, advantage because then I can cut many at once. I think on this one I'm going to make it like a flower maybe. Scoopity scoop like a maybe it maybe even looks like a cloud. There we go. The fun thing about shapes boys and girls is that everyone knows how to put a shape together to make another picture. Like right now when I'm using these shapes, these cloudy shapes, someone might think they look like a cloud, but then someone might say, oh no, I think it's more like a flower. And they'll see what I'm going to do to it to make it really look like one or the other. Will it be a cloud? Will I put lightning bolt on it? 
or will it be a flower? And I'll put a center on it. You will see, because oh, the whole time I'm cutting, I'm thinking, what will I do next? That's what an artist does. They think, okay, I'm working on this. What will I do to change it a little bit? What will it look like? What will I add to it? And you know what's kind of fun? I sometimes like to make it look like fabric, like maybe a Native American blanket, and you can have it fall off the edge like this. It continues the pattern, but it goes off the edge. We used to have a loom at my classroom and everyone wanted to weave on it. And we wove grasses sometimes. Sometimes we would use yarn. Now I'm going to show you, I said I was going to let you know what it is going to be more like. Am I going to add the lightning bolts or am I going to add something that makes it look like a flower? Look what I'm doing. I'm getting green out, so that should give you a clue. Is it a lightning bolt, or is it something that makes it look more like a flower? You're right. I'm making little leaves to go in between. And then I might even put a center in the middle of each of the flowers to make it, oh, it tried to stick on my glue stick. Try to stay on my finger, too. My fingers are so gluey, because I keep putting them on the glue stick. Can't wait to get that off because it just makes me stick to everything. So there's a little bit more green because I need one, two more leaves. So you can look ahead and say to yourself, what else do I need? Because an artist is always thinking what their next step might be. Let's take a look at this, get my glue stick down here, get more glue on my fingers because I'm doing it. That way I told you is easier for your paper, but it's not easier for your fingers. Now, adding this last leaf, and what I'll do to my center, I think I'll use these little black polka dots. So I'll put a dot there, a dot there, a dot there, there, and maybe the edge of this one I'll have to trim one off. Maybe. Do you notice my patterns and shapes? Because today we're talking about shapes, and shapes are formed when the line crosses over itself. Oh, this one really wants to stick and be part of my own body pattern. Maybe I won't put one on that one. All right, so we've done a straight line with pattern, a curved line with pattern, a zigzag with pattern. And earlier, one of the men who work here at the studio found these scissors in my box, and he was so excited to see them. They are my pattern scissors. They will cut paper into a, like a zigzag. I think I'll use this color. Oh, it just barely fits, but it will be okay. Now notice, these are the kind of scissors that you don't have to zig and zag yourself. You just cut it and it cuts the pattern itself. There, your teacher, I think, probably has at least one pair of these scissors and you can get them at all kinds of craft stores. I'm going to go across on this one, make my zigzag. And you know what? Seamstresses use this kind of scissor too. It's called a pinking shear because it helps your fabric not fray when you cut the edges. And they say, oh, that fabric is coming apart. You need to pink it. It doesn't mean the color pink. It means use the pinking shears and that makes it a zigzag edge. As I work on this pattern, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do tomorrow because I think I won't put the pattern on this one because I really want you to see how I'm going to do the yarn. I think I'll just start with this red yarn. And I want the yarn to go through these holes and I wonder how long it needs to be. So I'm going to just cut a bunch of them and start stringing them. You're going tomorrow to bring white paper, two, sorry boys and girls, two circle shapes, some red, white, blue, and yellow paint, and we will see what we make with a form. I fold my yarn in half, put it through the hole, and come through. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. 
Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Do you see how I'm putting my fringe on the edge of this? It will be a magic carpet. Boys and girls, thanks for coming today and learning about shape. Tomorrow we're going to learn about form and we're going to paint a pear, a flat pear that ends up looking like a form. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.